All right, I'm going to call the uh, meeting to order. And the first thing we're going to do is uh, welcome our uh, new, many, uh, new member to the Committee of Adjustment, uh, Janice Robinson. And uh, welcome. And uh, we're going to invite you to share a few words about yourself and uh, your interest in coming to our Committee of Adjustment. Go ahead. course. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, now that I've got the speak sign on. Um, so it's quite an honor to be appointed to committee. I just retired at the end of April from a 40-year career as a land use planner and had uh, experience working in municipal government for the cities of Brampton and Scarborough, worked um, for developers as VP of planning for 22 years, and then the last nine years of my career, I was a consultant and uh, worked on everything from minor variance applications for replacement houses in Toronto to 50-story high-rise buildings. And then in between all of that, I did, I was two terms on City of Mississauga Committee of Adjustment. So, but for me, this brings my career full circle because my very first job was as a summer student for Township of Fenlon and splitting my time at Victoria County Planning Department and Township of Fenlon. And that was the start of my career. And um, so this is pretty exciting. It's come 180 degrees, 360 degrees, full circle. And, um, and here I am in this council chambers on this committee. So uh, thank you all for welcoming me to the committee. Thank you. With that pedigree, we're going to be looking for a lot of help, so uh, just uh, keep that in mind. All right. Okay, as required under the Planning Act, a public meeting is being held prior to the committee making a decision on these applications. And the first thing I'll do is introduce uh, our committee. Uh, I'm uh, Mr. Robertson. Uh, we've got uh, Mr. Marsh, Ms. Richardson, Ms. Archer, Mr. Strangway, and Ms. Robinson, who we just heard from. So. And staff uh, in person here, we've got the Acting Secretary Treasurer, Mr. Leahy, our Acting Manager of Planning, Ms. Ms. Berry, and I always say this, but it's true, probably the most important person here is our Recording Secretary, Ms. Crocker. And staff remotely, I'm told we have uh, David Harding, Planner 2, Kent Staten, Planner 2, and uh, again, and welcome uh, our uh, Chief Building Official, Ms. Murchison. Good stuff. All right. All right, to start things off, can I get a motion to approve the agenda as printed? Mr. Myers, Ms. Richardson, further comments or questions? All those in favor? And that carries. All right. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? It's too close to Christmas to have money, isn't it? <laughs> All right, the minutes of the... Uh, Last meeting. Before I get a motion on the floor, are there any comments or questions with respect to those minutes? All right. Ms. Archer, do I have a seconder? Mr. Strangway? All those in favor? And that carries. Thank you. All righty. All right. For the members of the public that are online there, um, the committee will hear comments, gather information, and may ask questions to clarify statements made. The committee may ask and answer questions or redirect questions to the appropriate person. Please note that any information or comments given to the committee during this meeting, they're considered evidence. We will first hear from staff and then the applicant or his or her agent. We will then hear for, from any person in support of or from those who have questions, concerns, or are opposed to the application. And finally, the applicant or his or her agent will have an opportunity to speak to, to respond to any of the statements made to the committee. And I would advise that if you're online and you wish to speak to the committee, uh, we'll, when you come on, on the screen, please state your name. And I would advise that we will uh, afford you 10 minutes to make your presentation. I don't think anyone has ever gone 10 minutes before, so uh, they're usually much shorter than that. But if you find that 10 minutes isn't sufficient, then I will ask the committee if they would afford you a few more minutes to finish your, re your presentation. As I say, I don't think that's ever happened, but we like to let you know that uh, that is the case. All right. 
Moving right along then, we're dealing with file number D20-2021-029. This is a deferred application. Mr. Marsh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd, I'd like to speak to it. A, I, I think it's, uh, we're now dealing with report 038, correct? Yes. Before we do that, uh, Kathy, have we got a Mr. Harjula online? Can you bring him up on the screen, if he is? All right. You're Mr. Harjula? Yes. All right. Just hang in there, sir. Go ahead, Mr. Um, Marsh. As uh, discussed with you, Mr. Chair, I, I am uh, proposing to put forward a, a motion to defer this application um, due to, uh, it, it appears, based on the fact that there's, there's some information that could be brought forward to assist us. So um, before doing that, I don't know if you wanted to say something or not. Uh, just that, uh, now you've discussed this with staff. Uh, Ms. Berry, do you wish to uh, add anything? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, if I could just request uh, that Member Marsh uh, provide just a little bit of context um, for the elements uh, of information that he um, suggests are missing from the report, uh, I think that would be very helpful uh, to sort of contribute to, um, to our comments. No, and I think it's almost in order. I agree. Uh, the, the reason I've asked, uh, if, the, if there's a motion to defer on the floor, the only thing that can be debated is the time. So as a result, uh, Mr. Marsh, I'd uh, prefer that you make those comments prior to there being a motion to defer, so go ahead. Uh, thank you. So as I said, not to debate the entire report, and I, and I hope that's not where this is leading. That's why a deferral. I hope not to. I, I want to request, but it, it would appear um, upon review that there's, um, there's a policy that is, is, or a policy or a review of staff that is not completed. And personally, and, and, I, and I think in consultation with, with different people, um, we really should have that review or that report available uh, before we proceed with this. So it's, it's not denying anything, it's not to delay it on purpose. I just believe that the information is lacking and that um, it's not lacking, it's just not available yet. Uh, so in, in fairness to staff, I'd also like to say, um, one of the reasons it's back here obviously is because it was deferred and it had to be dealt with today. So uh, I certainly don't want this to reflect on staff that they've left something out. I think they've done the best they can with what they had to work with, but there is still some, uh, in my opinion, and if, if committee agrees, we'll find out, uh, information missing that would would assist us as a committee to move forward with this. All right, Ms. Berry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, that, that's helpful, uh, and I appreciate the comments that Member Marsh has uh, presented. Um, that certainly sounds reasonable uh, to me in terms of uh, the matter uh, agreeably is very complex. Um, there are uh, a number of ways to proceed, and proceeding via deferral uh, is, is a reasonable suggestion. Well said. Thank you. I guess I should ask, uh, are there any comments? You've heard some of the comments, uh, committee members. Yes, Mr. Strang. Um, first of all, thanks to Mr. Marsh for bringing this forward. I'm just wondering from staff, <coughs> Excuse me, how long, I assume this is the policy with uh, regard to the roads and so on, I'm just wondering how long this uh, will be delayed for and uh, what, what the uh, applicant owner is, in, uh, is involved with as far as this deferral. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Marsh will address that in his motion, but uh, prior to me, Asking for that, I'll, I'll be asking Mr. Harjula to speak. Um, anything further from committee? 
Mr. Harjula, you've heard the comments from Mr. Marsh with respect to we're considering a motion to uh, defer the motion for f because we require further information. Uh, have you any comments with respect to that? Uh, nothing specifically, but we'd like to do to uh, help uh, move the situation along. So if there is any specific information that we could help provide or be of service, then we're more than happy to, uh, to help. And I thank you so much for that. Mr. Marsh will indicate in his motion when we're intending to bring it back. Uh, but of course, uh, if uh, things come together a little earlier than, than our motion, certainly it can come back at any time. So it, it may be sooner than, uh, than we think. So you're, you're okay with that then? Yeah, yep. we're, we're more than happy to work with the, with the committees. Thank you very much. Mr. Marsh, go ahead with your motion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I uh, move that the application COA 2021-038 be deferred until such time that the City of Kawartha Lakes has completed its review of the corporate procedures for obtaining access to private lots by means of unassumed public right-of-ways and staff are able to provide the Committee of Adjustment with a copy of said review report, uh, and this deferral shall not exceed June 30th, 2022. Do I have a seconder? Mr. Strangway? All right. Um, and of course, there's no prohibitions with that coming back sooner, Mr. Marsh, if in fact uh, staff are prepared to do that? Uh, all right. The only thing to debate on a deferral motion is the time frame. Mr. Marsh has laid that out at uh, June 22nd, June of 2022, unless it's ready earlier. So any comments on the time frame? All right, all those in favor? And that carries. And Mr. Harjula, thank you very much for your comments. Thank you. All right, and thank you, uh, Mr. Marsh, for that. Uh, dealing with file number D20-2021-066, and we're dealing with 31 Westview Drive, Geographic Township of Emily, Ward 8. Go ahead, Mr. Stanton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, committee, and welcome, uh, Member Robinson. We can't... Hold on one second. Is there any particular reason for that? I'm sorry? can't see you. Uh, no, it'll, I'll, I'm trying to, uh, I'm in a different office, so I'm just, uh, there you go. Oh, I thought you were hiding under your desk or something. No, <laughs> no. Go ahead, uh, sir. Uh, give me one second. How is that looking? Oh. That looks fine. Okay. Apologies. So the purpose and effect of this application is to request relief from the following provisions in order to permit the construction of a single detached dwelling and an attached deck. First, we're looking at section 12.2.1.3, subsection B, subsection uh, two or II to reduce the minimum side yard setback from 5.5 meters to 1.6, uh, sorry, 1.26 meters, and section 12.2.1.3 subsection E to reduce the minimum water setback from 30 meters to 24.03 meters. I'd like to point out before we begin that the uh, page one of the report. Uh, outlines the name of the uh, street in question as Westview Road. This should be corrected to Westview Drive. The applicant submitted a pre-screening application to demolish an existing vacation dwelling and construct a new 165 square meter or approximately 1,776 square foot, two and a half story, a single detached dwelling with a walkout basement and attached wooden deck. A minor variance application was subsequently submitted in October 2021. Upon submission of the variance application, the need to increase the relief from the interior side yard requirements based on the number of stories proposed was identified. 
The application was amended and deemed complete on November 9th, 2021. The subject property is located on the east side of Pigeon Lake in the Westview neighborhood. The lots in the immediate vicinity consist of linear waterfront lots with single detached dwellings and vacation dwellings of various styles and built form. The neighborhood is cu currently undergoing a progression towards uh, an increase in built form and dwelling size. The lot currently contains a single story vacation dwelling and an attached wooden deck. A boathouse and garden shed, both constructed in 1963, according to MPAC, uh, which predate the zoning bylaw, can also be found on the lot. Access is provided from Westview Drive with a deeded access over a right of way running parallel to Westview Drive. The abutting lots on either side contain two story dwellings, with the dwelling to the south having, having been granted similar reliefs. Uh, to those sought through this application in 2005. Oh. As shown in the lot drainage and grading plan, the proposal will not project any further into the existing uh, southern interior side yard setback. The physical strengths, uh, constraints in the form of mature deciduous trees as well as the location of the proposed septic system essentially render the uh, location of uh, the dwelling uh, what, to, to what it is essentially um, in terms of the southern side yard setback while maintaining uh, an ample northern side yard setback. So as you can see here, the proposed, uh, what, uh, the proposed dwelling here, uh, the existing boathouse and deck, and the proposed septic system. So shown here are the proposed elevations of the single detached dwelling. On the left, you can see the uh, water yard or the western face on the top uh, with the northern side of the dwelling shown below. So right here. On the right, the eastern uh, or the front yard can be seen uh, on the top shown here with the southern elevation shown here below. These slides illustrate the, uh, the current single story vacation dwelling and the location of the access over the right of way. Adequate room for parking is available. The slide on the left is taken facing westward from the front yard. The size and location of uh, the trees, some of which are shown here, uh, combined with the owner's desire to re retain as many trees as possible, creates the previously mentioned constraints. The slide on the right is taken from the right of way looking to the southwest towards uh, 31 Westview, which can be seen in the background. These slides uh, give an appreciation for the built form on either side of the subject lands with the newer construction of a two-story dwelling shown at 29 Westview Drive on the left and what appears to be the original two-story dwelling at uh, abutting 31 Westview Drive shown on the right. As mentioned, that reach of Westview Drive is currently undergoing uh, a transformation uh, towards built form and dwelling size and it's anticipated uh, increased uh, built form and dwelling size, I should say, and it's anticipated that this will continue. So shown here are photos uh, of the access to 31 Westview Drive, um, from Westview Drive. You can see the, uh, the front of the dwelling behind the cedar tree in the slide on the left, just tucked in right around here. The slide on the right is taken at a reverse angle uh, from the front of the dwelling back towards the entrance to Westview Drive, just for perspective. Uh, shown here is the aforementioned boathouse on the left and the garden shed on the right. Again, both were constructed uh, approximately in 1963, according to MPAC, and they predate the uh, Township of Emily zoning bylaw. The intent of the interior side yard setback is to ensure there is sufficient space for maintenance to be carried out uh, for lot grading and drainage, and to ensure accessibility for the passage of items between the front and rear yards. 
the existing location uh, of the southern wall of the vacation dwelling at 1.25 meters, as you can see on the left, um, is non-compliant with the zoning bylaw. Engineering has confirmed that there will be no drainage impacts to adjacent properties through the proposal. The 6.72 meter northern side yard setback illustrated in the slide on the right provides ample room for maneuverability, uh, again, between the, the water yard and the front yard. The intent of the 30 meter water setback uh, is to provide sufficient spatial separation between the shoreline and built form to protect the ecological integrity of the lake. The 24.03 meter separation provides space for the establishment of vegetation to provide functions such as stormwater infiltration and attenuation. The proposed western limit of the deck represents a slight improvement on the water setback in comparison to the existing footprint. The newer, more efficient septic system provides an upgrade from the existing system and an overall net benefit to the natural environment. The slide on the left shows the established building line looking to the south um, along that reach of, um, of Pigeon Lake. You can see uh, several accessory buildings and structures located within the water setback on the adjacent properties. And this proposal, again, slightly improves the overall water setback. The slide on the right uh, shows the existing water yard of the subject lands. The proposed dwelling in the attached deck will be at least 24 meters away from the shoreline, satisfying policy 3.11 of the official plan, which directs development away from the shoreline wherever possible and establishes a minimum water setback of 15 meters. Notwithstanding the increased height of the dwelling, there are no windows on the northern wall of the adjacent two-story dwelling at 29 Westview Drive to the south, as shown on the right. Thus, there will be no impact to privacy. There are also no access points proposed uh, along the southern interior wall of the dwelling, and sufficient space remains uh, with the uh, interior side yards to allow passage, um, again, in between the front and rear yards. The vegetative sc screening between the neighboring lots to the north and uh, shown on the, as shown on the left will yeah. also remain. Comments were received from Engineering and Corporate Assets Division stating that they have no objection to the proposal. The Supervisor of Party Sewage Systems of the Building well, Sector it, it Division the advises that is, the owner must have said something. Is, is, is someone, uh, someone does it for the on. Hey, really? What's uh, happening there, Kathy? Uh, Tom, Mr. DeBoer, could you kindly mute your, your phone, please? <laughs> I find nothing surprises me anymore with this technology. It just doesn't. So go ahead, Mr. Staten. Yeah, no, no problem. The, uh, so the supervisor of Part 8 sewage systems of the Building and Septic Division advises that the application for a sewage system permit has been submitted as part of the proposed build. The design of the sewage system was revised during the review process to reflect the actual structure with all of the decking included. This was completed to ensure appropriate placement space and clearance distances for the sewage system with the proposed dwelling. As the, as the new proposal is all encompassing, there are no further concerns with the minor variants moving forward. Since the writing of the report, comments were received from the chief building official of the building and septic division, stating that a building permit is required for the proposed works. Comments were also received from Kortha Conservation stating that they have no concerns with the proposal uh, provided a permit is obtained, uh, I believe, for the septic system. Based on the contents of the report, staff acknowledges the application meets all four tests of a minor variance, and staff respectfully recommends approval of the application subject to the conditions identified within the report. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Staten. As usual, well done. Are there any questions to the planner? All right, being none, is the applicant or agent on the online wishing to speak to the application? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, my name is Holly Richards Conley, and I am the agent for the owners of 32 Westview Drive. All right, thank you. Go ahead. Right, thank you. Um, I have nothing else to add. I'm just here to answer any questions that council or yourself may have. All right, thank you for that. Are there any questions of the agent? All right, thank you again for taking the time. Uh, all right. Uh,
Is there anyone online that wishes to speak in support of this application? In support of this application? Anyone online wishing to speak in opposition to the application? Opposition to the application. Mr. Strangway. As printed. Do I have a seconder? Mr. Marsh, any further comments or questions? Excuse me. All those in favor? And that carries. Thank you. All right. Moving right along, we're dealing now with file number D20-2021-067. And this is 552 Fleetwood Road, Geographic Township of Members, Ward 8. Mr. Harding, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, committee. Uh, Kent, would you be able to stop uh, sharing your screen, please? All right, while we're waiting for that, uh, welcome, Member Robinson. All right, thank you, Kent. So let me just start sharing my screen here. There we go. So this application proposes to permit a 7.31 by 15.24 meter addition to the existing detached garage. Relief is required or a sought rather from the front yard setback, the maximum height, and the open space zone setback provisions. Property is within a natural area composed mostly of the Pigeon River Number 20 Provincially Significant Wetland Complex. There are small raised pockets of land within the wetland where dwellings are located. These dwellings are located relatively close to the road. And this is the case with the subject parcel. The application does meet the four tests for minor variance. So as we can see on the aerial photograph here, the dwelling and the developed landscaped area around the dwelling is located on the northwestern part of the parcel. And there's a pond to the south and east of the dwelling and the wetlands surrounding this parcel beyond. The existing detached garage is, exists to the northeast, sorry, northwest of the dwelling. And the addition is proposed to the north of the existing garage as can be seen on the sketch here. The addition is going to be deeper than the existing garage, uh, pushing more eastward than the existing garage, but is keeping in line with the Western building face of that garage. Here we have some elevations of the proposal. So the uh, most visible face of the garage as you're entering the parcel is in the upper left-hand corner. The portion of the garage that is going to face the road is on the upper right hand corner, although this will be heavily screened as uh, I'll get into my report in a moment. Okay, so this is viewing the entrance to the parcel from the road here to give you a, a sense of the, the natural community. And we can see here that the yard in this uh, front area is used primarily for storage purposes, containing both uh, storage buildings and outdoor storage. The next photograph here shows on the left-hand side, uh, the road looking southwards into the property. So the proposed garage is going to be right behind these trees here. The trees are not being removed in order to facilitate the construction. And then the photograph on the right shows the proposed building footprint of the garage already. All right, and here we are in walking into the parcel. Same thing, so this is where the proposed footprint of the garage is. And then on the right hand side, we have a measuring tape denoting about how far in front the garage will extend eastwards in relation to the existing detached. And here we have a better capture of the, the storage uses that uh, are currently occupying this front yard area. So as noted, the buffering that uh, we can see previous in those previous photographs, as well as the photograph on the right, the uh, Fleetwood Road is just beyond this tree line here. There's a lot of screening that is occurring with respect to uh, 
this parcel. So the massing impact is going to be quite minimal. The property is zoned a rural residential type one special 13 zone, an open space zone. The uh, residential zone category is confined to that developed space that we see in the photographs here around the house. So the purpose of the front yard setback is to ensure that garages above a certain size are located a suitable distance back from the road to make sure that they remain visually ancillary to the streetscape. In this case, it does because of the screen that is present. And also we have a fair degree of spatial separation between the garage and the house. So even when you're on the parcel, there's not uh, going to be a sense of that ancillary use being uh, more primary than the dwelling. With respect to the open space zone, so this is the uh, property on the west side, which has the open space zoning there. And the purpose of that open space zoning is to recognize that there are environmental constraints somewhere on that parcel. And the 15 meter setback is the, the standard setback. Anything less than that goes through the variance process to review to see whether or not there's going to be any adverse environmental impacts. And this, at this time, as uh, noted previously, the garage is getting no closer to that western lot line than the existing. And the Kawartha Region Conservation Authority has been circulated on the application. Uh, while they have not provided formal commentary on this proposal to date, I did have a conversation with the planner there and she has advised that uh, it's gone through the permitting review process. While it's slightly different than the, the Planning Act review that they do, uh, there are some similarities there and their office has issued a permit for this proposal under their Conservation Authorities Act regulation. Since the writing of this report, comments have been received from the chief building official, and they have noted that there is an outstanding building permit on the parcel, uh, but they've also noted that there is a permit required for the proposed works. Comments have also been received from Sandra Flintoff, and Raymond Hudson at 530 Fleetwood Road, which is the property to the west. And their comments may be found in committee's amended agenda package. So in response to the uh, comments proposed or provided by the owners, rather, the applicants were able to provide a response. So in response, the applicant said that the west yard is currently used as kind of like a, a trail area that being the yard between the western lot line and the west face of the existing garage, and that use is not proposed to change. Uh, there will continue to be trail access on the western face of the expanded garage area. Staff respectfully recommends that the application be granted subject to the conditions identified in the report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions to the planner? Ms. Archer, go ahead. Through you, please, to the planner. Um, on Appendix D, please, I think one of the concerns, maybe I'm wrong, but I think one of the concerns in the, in the neighbor's comments was that that door facing, well, the rear elevation was going to be um, a man door, or is it going to be used for vehicles? Right, this door here. Uh, I believe there is still the potential for vehicular access, but if the owners are on uh, on the call, perhaps they can add some additional clarification. Uh, they have said that uh, to me back in response to the neighbor's comments that they aren't proposing to, to pave or otherwise improve this area uh, to the west of the garage. So it's gonna be in informal if there is any vehicles that do happen to be there. Anything further from committee? All right. Is the applicant online? Does the applicant wish to speak to the application? Yes, sir. Your name? Uh, you got to push another button there. We can't hear you. Sorry, I'm not used to the Zoom calls. Feeling? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, what's your name, sir? Yeah. My name is Wes Langmaid. How are you doing today? Very well. Go ahead. You wish to speak to the application? 
Uh, just with respect to the question about the uh, rear uh, garage door. So um, our family has snowmobiles and uh, uh, dirt bikes for the kids. So it would just be more or less to drive those vehicles through um, that door. But uh, if it's a problem, I'd have no problem deleting that door. All right, thank you. Are there any questions of the uh, applicant? All right, thank you for that, sir. Is there anyone online wishing to speak in support of this application? In support of the application? Anyone online wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Opposition to the application? All right, being none, committee, where are we? Mr. Marsh, Mrs. Richardson, all right. Any further comments or questions with respect to the motion on the floor? All right, all in favor? And that carries. And if the applicant is still there, your application is passed. Carried, approved, whatever. All right, thank you. And moving right along, we're now dealing with file number D20-2021-068, and this is 1405 Killarney Bay Road, Geographic Township of Fenland, Ward 3. And again, Mr. Harding, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this application proposes to permit three separate buildings. We have a detached garage. There we go moment I'm fiddling with technology here there we go okay so the we're looking to uh, replace the existing storage building which has been identified as a garage this in the southeastern corner of the parcel with a detached garage just a bit more to the north we're also looking at constructing a shed also to the north and east of the existing dwelling and to reconstruct a semi-detached boathouse. In order to uh, proceed with construction, reliefs are sought from the shoreline setback, the EP zone setback, the exterior side yard setback, the interior side yard setback, and the building separation setback between a primary building and an accessory building. I do want to note, uh, let's see here. As a committee will see in a moment that there is, sorry, rephrasing here. So there is one error in the staff report before I proceed. Uh, so in proposed condition one, it makes reference to appendix B as in Bob, when it should be appendix D or David. Just wanted to highlight that uh, to committee before we proceeded here. In terms of the post elevations, I'll get into this uh, in a little bit more detail after I get over to the site pictures, but we have the semi-detached boathouse proposed on this slide here. So the property line is going to sit pretty much right down the middle where the peak is proposed in that upper left-hand drawing. We have elevations of the proposed attached garage here, so there'll be a small loft space as well and then the garden shed. I'm going to start actually at the back here. So the existing semi-detached boat house has pretty much almost sunken into the water completely. Uh, that is the kind of wood planking that you see in both of the images here. Uh, the dwelling on the subject parcel is pretty much uh, centered on the image on the left and off to the side on the image on the right there. And the lot line kind of runs down the middle of that uh, planking area. All right, so now backing up to here. Okay, so staff are of the opinion that uh, the application as amended by staff meets the four tasks for minor variance. So the property is the first lot obtaining access onto the private portion of Killarney Bay Road. Backing up to the aerial photograph for a moment here. 
So we have the municipal road allowance here running east-west. Kalani Bay is the section that abuts the south lot line when it turns into whitetail as it progresses east. We have the private Kalani Bay Road uh, to the east going on the more north-south axis. There is also a unopened road allowance that runs to the water on the west side of the parcel. And then the parcel also has uh, some shoreline frontage here along Balsam Lake. So as we can see here, the lot has a relatively shallow width. It does get better as uh, you progress more northerly due to the angle of that north lot line. But the frontage on uh, the private portion of Clarny Bay Road is quite narrow just because of the angle of that lot line on the north side there. And this leaves a uh, modest frontage on the private portion of Clarny Bay Road, which makes it a little bit more challenging to, uh, to get access into that parcel as well as to site uh, a garage. So as we can see here on the aerial photograph, that existing storage building is very close to the corner of the uh, road intersections. And that building also sits pretty much on the lot line. Being the south lot line is very close to the eastern lot line. So the new garage is going to provide cover storage for vehicles in a much better position, allowing parking between it and the private road. Go up to here. So we can see shifting the garage to the north, we're gonna have more parking between the garage and the private road. The garage door is proposed on the eastern building face. It's also situated as far away from the south lot line as is possible, which also provides better opportunity for vehicles turning into the property as the driveway is very close to those intersections. So if a vehicle is to approach on Clarney Bay Road, being the municipal portion of Clarney Bay Road, and then is going to turn into the parcel and then park, there's gonna be a parking pad that's proposed to the immediate south of the garage that will allow them to make that turn, which is a part of the reason why they're looking to push the garage as far north as is possible to and therefore have a reduced side yard setback for the garage. So getting into the neighborhood pictures here. So this is the, uh, the functioning front yard of the parcel, although by definition, this is the back. So we have the existing garage storage building here and the image on the right, and then the image on the left here. So the parking pad is currently to the north of that building. So the garage is proposed over a portion of the parking pad here, and then further into like the bush. So in this image on the right, it's basically going to be occupying a fair portion of the, the parking pad that we see here. Here we have a shot of the parcel from the roads. So this is the south lot line on the image on the left. So we can see that it's heavily screened from the road already. So this parcel does not address the publicly owned portion of Clarny Bay Road at all. It is kind of facing the private portion of Clarny Bay, which is on the image on the right. So we can see the existing driveway entrance there onto the parcel, which is going to be widened. This fence that we see in front of the municipal car here is going to be removed uh, since the driveway uh, will need to be widened in order to provide access to the door for the garage that's uh, going to be facing onto the private portion of the road. This is just a better shot going into the parcel. So here we have the private parking pad again and the kind of uh, landscape strip, which is going to be a little bit reduced in order to accommodate the garage. Now that being said, the 0.8 meter setback, while it does provide for a better turning radius for vehicles that are approaching this property from the west, uh, and a one point, sorry, a 0 0.8 meter setback is likely to be a little bit more problematic for maintenance and access purposes, given the gable design of the garage. We do have a lot of water that's going to be directed to that north property line. So it's anticipated that in order to better maintain that side of the garage, they will need a little bit more space. Uh, so I am recommending that we bump that up a little bit from 0 0.8 to 1 meter 
to allow for a little bit more uh, access room to get a ladder in there or other maintenance equipment. Moving on to, oh, I'll stay on this picture in a moment actually. The garden shed is going to be in this lawn space just beyond the garage. Uh, which we'll see in the next couple of pictures is going to be also between the boathouse and garage construction. So it's kind of hidden in line with the existing uh, accessory use built form that will be established on this parcel. So back to the boathouse here. So the existing semi-detached boathouse is in line with the shoreline, but is at an angle to the dwelling in part due to the uh, unusual configuration of the lot. So as a result of these two different orientations, the closest point between the two buildings comes together at a point, which we can see in these two images here. So we have the southern wall of the boathouse, which kind of travels up into this viney area here. So this is about the corner of the excavation where the existing boathouse is. That's not really proposed to change. So we can see in this case, it is appropriate to reduce the spatial separation between the boathouse and the dwelling as yard access between the east and west yards isn't actually via the lawn, but via the, the porch, which is right beside where the boathouse is and that portion is considered an extension of the dwelling in this case, which is why relief is being sought. Boathouse design with the gable roof that will run down the middle of the initial property line ensures minimal need for trespass onto the opposite side in order to carry out maintenance on the own side. As identified with the proposed garden shed previously, uh, this shed is going to be tucked in behind the boathouse, uh, given how both the boathouse and the dwelling come together at a point uh, very close to the shoreline. Pretty much there's going to be a continuous mass of built form facing the shoreline anyway, so this shed is not anticipated to be visible at all uh, once the boathouse is constructed, and therefore no adverse impacts to the shoreline are anticipated as a result of the shed's placement. Since the writing of the report, comments have been received from the chief building official, who has noted that a permit is required for the proposed works, and also that there is an outstanding building permit open for the dwelling. Staff respectfully recommends the application be granted, subject to the conditions noted in the report as amended. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you. Are there any questions of the planner? Mr. Strangway, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Harding, thanks for your report. Certainly lots going on here. Uh, just one question with regard to the boathouse and the approval there. Is Trent Severn involved in this? This appears to be, if I'm correct, a wet boathouse. So because we're replacing an existing boathouse, is it therefore grandfathered? Or what are the implications around approvals from Trent Severn? Starting. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to Member Strangway. So my understanding of... Uh, the circumstance of this boathouse, and it is a little bit hard to see since it has uh, fallen into, oops, that's not the right chair. Too many things to share here. There we go. Uh, since it has pretty much fallen into the lake is that there is a portion of it that is a wet boathouse uh, because the property owners haven't been able to access underneath it in some time. I'm not sure exactly to the extent that it is wet. Uh, they're still playing around with different designs. So they're not sure at this point in time if they're going to be keeping it a wet boathouse or filling or even just kind of building a, a raised kind of floor on top of the water. Uh, but I wanted to give you that background before I answered the, the main point of the question, which is yes, Trent Severin did reach out to me and asked what the city was thinking in terms of uh, getting a sense if we would be okay with this sort of reconstruction. So they're willing to, uh, to grant approval because this is uh, basically an existing situation. So they'll uh, defer to committee and will approve what uh, committee approves. 
Uh, thanks, Mr. Harding, for that information. This is certainly going to be an improvement to what's there. So uh, I'm glad to hear Trent Severn has been involved, and uh, I appreciate your answer. Thank you. All right, something new every meeting, a semi-detached boathouse. I've never... Uh, are there further questions of the planner? All right. Is the applicant online? Do you wish to speak to the application? And your name, sir? My name is Ryan De Silva. All right, go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak here, and thank you to Mr. Harding for um, all his work over the last several months. He's been very supportive and understanding of our property constraints and has worked closely with us to put the application forward. So we're grateful for that. Um, as you can see, we have a very odd shaped corner lot with, a, with uh, existing structures, the boathouse and the garage uh, that are in poor shape and are unsafe. And so we're looking forward to having the opportunity to, uh, to address those concerns uh, as a result of going through this process. All right, and uh, thank you for those comments. Any questions of the uh, applicant? All right. Is there anyone online wishing to speak in support of this application, in support of the application? Anyone online wishing to speak in opposition to the application? Opposition to the application. All right. And just to the applicant, so you're okay with the uh, condition four there being uh, increased from 0 0.8 to uh, one meter then you don't wish to speak to that um I, I think i have had conversations with mr harding about the turn itself uh, i believe that it is tight uh and the extra relief would be helpful uh but uh, to the extent that the committee is satisfied with uh, mr harding's uh call it proposal or modification uh we will live with it all right thank you for that sir uh, again are there any yes mr strangley question no all right, all right, the motion would be as amended. So do I have, okay, Ms. Robinson, all right. You're making that motion as amended. Do I have a seconder? Mr. Strangway, all right. Any further comments or questions? All those in favor? Oh, sorry, go, um, go ahead, uh, Ms. Archer. Sorry, I just had one question. I know um, through the building permit process, they said there was still one outstanding on the cottage or on the property. Is there any way you can tie them together so we can get them cleared up or we don't care? Mr. Harding, do you wish to speak to that? Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm not an expert in the building permit process, uh, but I understand the chief building official is here. Uh, so perhaps you can answer a bit more clarification as to how that would unfold. Thank you, I see her there with her guitars. Go ahead, Ms. Murchison. Hi, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, with respect to my comments, we just try to take every opportunity to remind applicants and property owners that they have outstanding permits. Um, in this case, it's a 2011 permit. It's still on the books, needs a final inspection to clear it up. Um, with respect to whether it can be tied to anything, there's really no legal way to prevent a future permit because you have an outstanding permit. Um, there's other avenues for the building department to take in order to get permit files cleared up. But we, we encourage the applicant to clear it up. Thank you. Thank you. Do you wish to speak to that? I, I, was, uh, I was not aware that that permit had not been closed. I had a contractor who, uh, who built the, the existing cottage back in 2011, and I understood it to be closed. I think at that point as well, he had put in an application to rebuild the garage in its current location. Uh, and I understood that permit had been closed. So uh, I will make sure to close it if that's what's required. Thank you, sir. If you contact Ms. Murchison, that would be uh, appreciated. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Any further, uh, I guess we got a motion on the floor as amended. So any further comments or questions on that motion? All in favor? And that carries. Thank you. All right. I believe we're now dealing with the other half of this boathouse. So uh, file number D20-2021-069. And this is uh, 1415 Killarney Bay Road, Geographic Township, Fenton Ward 3. And perhaps, Mr. Harding, it could, could be more of a Coles Notes version rather than, please? Absolutely, Mr. Chair. Let me just uh, find the right screen to share again here. There we go. And so as you've noted, Mr. Chair, this is the other half of the semi-detached boathouse. So we're moving up just a little bit on the north side of the private portion of Killarney Bay Road. 
plate plan here. So as we can see, we've got uh, a little bit of a jog in the shoreline frontage of this parcel in order to accommodate the boathouse that was constructed in the first place. Uh, we do have, because of the limited depth of that jog, a very constraining factor for uh, the setback that building can achieve to that uh, lot line, the back, I guess would be the back lot line of the lot line facing Balsam Lake uh, in order to, to maximize the depth for a uh, boat storage building, which is why we're seeking relief from the setback there, just because they're trying to get uh, a sizable enough uh, boat storage area for this side of the boathouse. Same gable design with the peak running down the middle. And that peak represents where the mutual lot line is proposed to be. As a committee can see in the side elevations now, uh, so this piece here is the portion that belongs to this side of the parcel. And we can see we've got a very, very narrow eave here in order to minimize the setback. We also have, because of the gable design, all the water being directed onto the side rather than the back. So as a result of that maintenance access to this face of the building, which is facing east, is supposed to be very infrequent because you're not going to have the water and all the other debris that would typically uh, fall in that area. So while maintenance can be act, uh, carried out with that 0.3 meter setback, it's a little bit more challenging because of that reduced setback, but the frequency of having to maintain that is considered to be much less just because you're not having the water and all the debris directed to that side in the first place. And then we have the parcel here. So the subject property is on the left-hand side, being 1415, 1405 is on the right-hand side. The deck that I'm sitting on, sorry, the dock I'm sitting on about these images does belong to, to uh, 1415 and the lot line between the two parcels runs somewhere down the middle of that uh, sunken roof of the semi-detached boathouse. So in this case, in order to permit the reconstruction of this side of the semi-detached boathouse, they need relief from the interior side yard setback and the rear yard setback representing those two lot lines in the jog and also from the maximum lot coverage. Uh, the reason why the maximum lot coverage is going up slightly is uh, they're making a more robust walls so they're expanding just ever so slightly around the existing footprint for that building which is pushing up the lot coverage ever so slightly. So staff are of the opinion that the proposal meets the four tests for minor variance. Uh, due to what I said before they've minimized the need to get into that reduced setback area as uh, through building design so I believe it is appropriate what they're proposing with the frequency of maintenance that uh, would result from that building design. The lot coverage or the massing impacts associated with that increase in lot coverage are not anticipated to be perceptible because we are building in the exact same location as the existing boathouse. Uh, since the writing of the report, comments were received from the chief building official, identifying that a permit is required for the proposed works and also highlighting that there is a open building permit on the house. Staff respectfully recommends that the application be granted subject to the conditions identified in the report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, are there any questions of the planner? All right, being none. Is the applicant online? Does the applicant wish to speak to the application? Doesn't appear to be. All right. Committee. Oh, wait a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. Is there anyone here, uh, any online wishing to speak in support of this application? In support of the application? Anyone online wishing to speak in opposition to the application? Opposition to this application? Being none. Committee. Mrs. Archer, seconded by Mrs. Richardson. All right. Any further comments or questions? All those in favor? And that carries. Thank you. All right, we're now dealing with file number D20-2021-070, and this is 65 Wellington Street, former town of Lindsay, Ward 5, and again, Mr. Harding, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
So this application proposes to permit the construction of a detached garage by seeking relief from the front and interior side yard setbacks. So you can see we've got a stubby L-shaped parcel in a old uh, neighborhood just around the, the corner from where committee is sitting. There was a existing garage on the southwestern side, sorry, northwestern side of the parcel, uh, but that garage was demolished sometime over the summer, so well before the application was filed for variance. So the applicant is proposing to construct a garage in a very similar location, slightly improving on the setbacks. So we have a single bay detached garage, which is proposed to the west of the dwelling. It will have a single car door facing the road with windows on the top of the door, and then a uh, separate window to the east or left of the garage door, which is facing the road. There's also a pedestrian access door that is proposed between the eastern wall of the garage and the house. So here we have a picture of the subject parcel straight on on the left hand image with the parking pad beside the house uh, pretty much front and center there. And then the image on the right is me just walking a little bit further west down the road and then taking a picture of all the buildings in line there. Uh, so all the dwellings along this portion of Wellington Street are located to the side of the dwelling that preserves all of the yard between the building face and the road as landscaped amenity space. Garages where they do exist are located in line with or behind the dwelling and they are normally very small in nature being single car garages. And as we can see on this image on the right, most of the dwellings on the south side of Wellington Street are about in line with one another. So the design that uh, is being proposed is also in line with the existing house and then in keeping with that established building line that we see. Moving into the uh, parking pad area and the pad area where the existing garage, uh, or sorry, where the garage formerly was. Uh, so the property has a jog in it here, as we can see. The lot line runs about in line with where the fence is, and then it runs somewhere along the middle of these stones in the back before turning and lining up with this fence. So the slightly reduced west and south yards allow for a larger parking area between the front of the garage and the front lot line, and this will allow the parked vehicles to be fully contained on the parcel rather than overhanging partially into the municipal road allowance. Also by having a little bit of a reduced setback on that western side, we are maintaining larger, a larger access pathway between the garage and the house. This uh, pathway here, as you can see, is pretty much the primary service access and utility access into the rear yard. And also, since a pedestrian door is proposed on this side of the garage, that additional space uh, that is freed up by moving the garage a little bit further to the west allows for additional maneuverability while that door is opening. A reduced eave is proposed on the south wall of the garage. So that's going to be where the, the pebbles are here in both of those images. And that reduced eave is going to minimize any encroachment issues that may result uh, as a result of needing to carry out maintenance on the building. Sufficient space remains around the east and south garage walls to carry out that maintenance. The property is within uh, the residential designation of the Town of Lindsay official plan and low density residential uses and accessory uses are anticipated in that designation. Since the writing of the report, comments have been received from the chief building official noting that a building permit is required for the proposed works. And a letter of support was also received from Jeremy Kramer and Amanda King of 66 Wellington Street, which is uh, immediately across the road from this parcel. And that letter of support can be found in committee's amended agenda package. Staff respectfully recommends that the application be granted subject to the conditions identified in the report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you. Are there any questions of the planner? All right. Is the applicant online? Does the applicant wish to speak to this application? All right. Being none. Fairly easy. All right. Is there anyone online wishing to speak in support of this application? In support of this application. Anyone online wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Opposition to the application. Committee, where are we? Ms. Richardson, seconded by Ms. Robinson. Any further comments or questions with respect to the motion on the floor? All in favor? And that carries. Thank you. We have a very agreeable committee here today. Very good. <laughs> All right, we're now dealing with file number D20-2021-072, and this is 2 Newry Road, Geographic Township of Manvers, Ward 8. Mr. Harding, you're a busy fellow. Go ahead. I certainly am, Mr. Chair. I want to uh, end the year with a big bang. All right, so let me share the screen again here. There we are. Okay, so this application proposes to permit the construction of a covered porch with stairs by seeking relief from the front yard setback. So the subject property is a farm located within a agricultural area, but also about say forested area and wetland on the uh, western side of the parcel. As uh, we can see a little bit in this aerial photograph, the assumed portion of New Re Road runs uh, down from Yelverton and pretty much terminates right in front of the farmhouse. At that point, then it narrows into a trail, which seems to be primarily used for uh, recreational vehicles. So we can see here that the porch that's proposed actually wraps around the entire house but relief is uh, sought for the piece that is uh, in front of the house. As that piece is the closest to the road in order to permit the entire constructed feature. So here again, committee, we can see the termination point of the assumed portion of Newry Road and right in front of the dwelling, how it narrows down and then becomes a trail. So we've got the front yard between the front lot line and the front base of the dwelling in the image on the right. And then I've got some shots uh, again of the front yard. In this case, the image on the left is me looking head on, looking towards the front face of the building. And then the image on the right is me kind of sitting on the Western side of the building, looking up the assumed portion of Newry Road, which travels East. So the application meets the four tests for minor variants. The dwelling was constructed circa 1900, according to MPAC, which would make it set back to the road legal non-complying as its construction would predate the first comprehensive zoning bylaw for Manvers Township. The covered portion of stairs provides access between the dwelling and front yard and also sheltered amenity space. The introduction of the porch provides a decrease to the building massing that faces Newry Road as it breaks up the two-story wall facing the road with that roof pattern. No adverse impacts to the rural character of the neighborhood are anticipated as the proposed built form does not present a mass that detracts from the rural character of the area. In this case, I believe it adds to it. Uh, there are no adverse impacts anticipated as a result of increasing the proximity of the dwelling to the road as we're not introducing any new intensive uses as a result of this expansion and the road has a relatively low activity so you're not going to have a conflict between the residential use and uh, the traffic use of the road. The property is within a prime agricultural and environmental protection designation as identified in the city's official plan. In this case the dwelling is within the prime agricultural designation the prime agricultural designation does permit low intensity residential uses that are accessory to agricultural uses. And in this case, this is a farmhouse on a active farming operation. Since the writing of this report, comments were received from the chief building official, uh, identifying that a building permit is required for the proposed works, and also identifying that there are two open building permit applications on the property, 
and that uh, there's an active enforcement file on the parcel, uh, which is why this application has been filed. Comments were also received from the Kawartha Region Conservation Authority, noting that it has no concerns with the proposal and that a permit for the proposal has been issued by its office. Staff respectfully recommends that the application be granted subject to the conditions identified in the report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Harding. Other questions of the planner? All righty. Is the applicant online? Does the applicant wish to speak to the application? All right. Ms. Murchison, are you still on uh, online? Yes, you are. I would like you to, uh, as a result, we have a, a new committee member, uh, Ms. Robinson, and uh, we're advised that uh, the, uh, the covered porch that encircles the whole first story of the railing was in the process, uh, process of being constructed without a building permit when it was discovered. Could you maybe enlighten us and Ms. Robinson as a new member as to what the process is when you discover a, uh, a construction like this and there's no building permit uh, attached, please. Okay, so uh, through you to the committee. Um, the first step we always take is to contact the uh, property owner and uh, try to work with them um, initially to get everything brought into compliance. Um, in the event, we've started a new process where we, act, we automatically open an enforcement file. So enforcement file is not always a, uh, a big negative. Um, sometimes an enforcement file is just that, you know, we found an issue, we've dialogued with the resident and we cleared up. Um, in a case like this, sometimes it moves on to, um, pre to preparing orders um, if we aren't seeing enough progress quickly. Um, but at this point, the, this resident is working to try and get everything resolved. It's just been um, the time waiting for the agenda item to hit your agenda. So um, hopefully once we get through this piece of it, if they're granted, then we can get this one cleared up pretty quickly. So there's not always a penalty invoked then? Um, there always is. Bill without a permit is automatically uh, a charge in our building bylaw. We can't waive it. So if you start the construction without a permit, your permit fee is doubled. If you start without a permit and you require a minor variance or starting in January, any planning application, your fee is tripled, or sorry, yeah, tripled. <laughs> sorry, tripled. All right. And I guess the other question is, Mr. Harding indicated that there are, and if I, I got this wrong, please correct me, but there are some open building permits. What are we doing about that? Um, in the case, this one, I believe I'm just mentioning the, um, the building permits that are relative to this work. So there is a garage as well that I don't think is subject to this um, minor variance, but there's also an open garage permit um, for the construction of the garage and then one for the porch. Are there any questions of Ms. Murchison? All right, thank you very much for that. Very much appreciated. All right. Is there anyone online wishing to speak in support of the application? In support of the application? Anyone online wishing to speak in opposition to the application? Opposition to the application? Committee. Ms. Richardson. All right, any further comments or questions? All in favor, and that carries. Thank you. All right, we're going to give you a holiday, Mr. Harding. I think he's finished there now. And we're now dealing with file number D20-2021-073, and that's 205 Snug Harbor Road, Geographic Township of Fenland, Ward 6. Go ahead, Mr. Staten. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You guys probably got tired of seeing my face up there without saying anything. You're quite a handsome fellow. <laughs> Thank you. Um, again, bear with me one second while I get the, uh, the screen issue sorted out. I think you guys can see the screen okay. I just need to swap here.
Are we struggling with that, uh, Mr. Staten? Yes, we are. There, I think I figured it out. Aha. Uh -huh. You just made it larger so there was more of you for us to look at. <laughs> oh, did I? Or now, how about now? Oh, you're still large. There, that's better. Oh, you can see it? Excellent, apologies. So the purpose and effect of this application is to request relief from the following provisions in order to recognize the location of an existing single detached dwelling and to permit the construction of a new attached deck. So with respect to the existing single detached dwelling, um, the relief is to recognize the reduction of the interior side yard setback. Mr. Staten, could I stop you there for a minute? I am advised that that perhaps isn't the right screen that you have up. Oh, you see my speaking notes. It's the Star Wars one. Have you got another one? <laughs> uh, yeah, just give me one second. You'd think I'd have this down pat by now. It's technology, not likely to happen. You're back to being big again. Okay. I'll figure this out, I swear. Uh, screen share. This should work. It looks like it did. Thank you. There. There. Does that work? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Oh. You're just trying to trick us, I think. <laughs> I'll, I'll go with that excuse. So the, uh, so the existing single detached dwelling, the reliefs that are re being requested are to recognize the reduction of the interior side yard setback from three meters to 2.96 meters. And on the opposite side to recognize a reduction of the interior side yard setback on the Southern side from 2.3 meters to 1.4 meters. With respect to the construction of the deck, the application uh, or the relief seeks to increase the maximum allowable lot coverage from 30% to 33.3%. The applicant is proposing to construct a new 39 square meter or 419 square foot wooden deck attached to the dwelling with a main level and a walkout basement. The dwelling was constructed in 2020. While reviewing the application for compliance with the zoning bylaw, it was identified that in addition to the relief required from the maximum allowable lot coverage provision, both interior side yards require recognition based on the walkout basement being considered a story within the zoning bylaw. Hey, I got it, it's working. The subject property is situated along the eastern shore of Sturgeon Lake, known as Snug Harbor, where the Scugog River flows into Sturgeon Lake. The Snug Harbor neighborhood consists of shoreline lots on steeper grades, with many of the dwellings featuring a, a walkout uh, configuration as a result of the, the slopes and uh, the terracing that is, that is uh, characteristic along this reach. The built form varies from larger three-story dwellings like the neighboring uh, 201 Snug Harbor Road to the south, um, and, which is to be future in future slides, uh, to those with a main floor walkout and walkout basement, including the subject lands. A vacant lot currently exists between uh, the subject lands and 201 Snug Harbor Road. Because of the recent nature of the construction on both lots, the aerial photo that's shown here doesn't accurately depict actually what's occurring on the ground. And uh, as you can see, this has essentially been eliminated now. Uh, and, and this is vacant with a new dwelling constructed here and a new dwelling constructed here um, as well. So shown here is a survey of the subject property. Um, with the location of the proposed deck, as well as the side entrance uh, stairway on the southern side of the uh, of the dwelling, um, it's it's important to note that the deck will comply with the water yard setback within the township of Fenland zoning bylaw. So again, here we have the proposed deck constructed in the water yard side, um, and again the the two um, 
dimensions for the interior side yards listed here with the side entrance stairway shown here. So shown here is a, a elevation drawings of the deck taken facing eastward from the water yard in the slide on the left shown here and on the right the proposed south face and northern face uh, facing elevations uh, are shown respectively with the walkout basement below the deck. So you can see here uh, proposed deck with the walkout below. The subject lands, as mentioned, contain a single detached dwelling with an attached garage, uh, as shown here from Snug Harbor Road facing west on the left hand side, um, and feature a terraced water yard shown on the right to address the, the grade, as I mentioned, leading down to the shoreline. So as you can see, there's several levels um, with one here, as well as the, the walkout uh, patio shown here. So provide here some, some examples of the, the very built form that exists within the neighborhood. Uh, larger examples can be found in the three-story dwelling uh, located to the south of the abutting uh, vacant lot, which is again to the south of the subject lands, which is shown on the left, to the more common single detached configuration with walkout basements seen on the abutting property to the north, which is addressed as 207 Snug Harbor Road. So many of the lots along Snug Harbor Road contain buildings and structures that, that do encroach within the water setback. A pre-existing single-story boathouse was replaced uh, in 2020 when the dwelling was constructed, uh, as is shown here on the left. The lot coverage increase of 3.33% um, in, in and above the, um, the maximum allowable coverage is essentially negligible. Uh, the, the construction of the deck will extend the amenity space from the main floor uh, to the rear yard with a patio um, from the walkout basement below, as you can see in the slide on the right-hand side. And it does provide for further enjoyment of the rear yard. The increase in lot coverage uh, maintains the intent of the zoning bylaw to maintain that adequate landscape open space for amenity servicing in the form of... of um, uh, sewage uh, and uh, a well and uh, stormwater infiltration uh, as well. Engineering and Corporate Assets Division has no concerns with the proposal in regard to lot drainage uh, and, and impacts to adjacent properties. Accessibility is also maintained on either side of the dwelling between the front and water yards of the subject lands. It's, uh, it's appropriate, therefore it's appropriate to increase the lot coverage to permit the attached deck. Yeah, just going back here. So the deck will actually facilitate this, this story here again with the walkout, as you can see below. Recognition of the uh, 0.04 meter and 0.86 meter side yard setback encroachments address a minor deficiency. The southern interior side entrance stairs and landing as, as shown here on the right, uh, were added following the construction of the dwelling. The stairs and landing present no impedance to uh, access along the southern side of the dwelling, with the slide on the left here showing the side yard looking southward, so you can see that vacant lot that I mentioned, uh, as well as the, the, the dwelling that was constructed um, relatively recently as well. Uh, as the property contains a walkout basement, the dwelling is treated as being two stories, as defined within the zoning by bylaw. The side yard setbacks are acknowledged to be three meters on the north side and 2.3 meters on the south side, um, with the acknowledgement of the 0 0.04 and 0 0.86 meter reductions on each respective side of the dwelling, again bringing the, the dwelling into compliance with the zoning bylaw, and it doesn't impede accessibility, impact the lot drainage patterns, or present massing impacts to the abutting lot owners. Both of the slides here show the northern interior side yard with the slide on the right taken from the shoreline looking uh, eastward. Comments regarding the application were received from Engineering and Corporate Assets Division as well as Kortha Conservation stating that they have no objections to the proposal. Excuse me. The Supervisor of Party Sewage Systems of the Building and Septic Division advised that a sewage system installation report had been completed for the installation of a Class 5 holding tank on the property in 2020. Based on a review, the location of the proposed deck 
uh, and the location of the proposed deck, the deck will span over the installed holding tank. The tank will remain accessible, however, for maintenance as the construction of the deck will be three meters off existing grade. The applicant is proposing to maintain a minimum of 1.5 meter clearance to any portion of the holding tank uh, with their construction and the outline placement and measurements indicated this can be accomplished. As such, the building and septic division has no further concerns with the minor variance proposal as it relates to private on-site sewage disposal. Public comments were received in support of the reliefs requested from Bruce and Nadine Heaslip of 201 Snug Harbor Road, dated November 16th, 2021. Since the writing of the report, comments were received from the chief building official of the building and septic division, advising that completion of building permit application BP 2021-0373 is required for the proposed construction of the deck. Public comments in support of the application were also received from Phil and Shirley Harlos of 207 Snug Harbor Road on Wednesday, November 17th, 2021. Based on the comments of the report and, cons and in consideration um, for the comments uh, provided as part of the review, staff acknowledges the application meets all four tests of a minor variance and staff respectfully recommends application uh, approval of the application subject to the conditions within the report. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of the planner? All right, is the applicant online? Does the applicant wish to speak to this application? No applicants today. Uh, no, fine, thank you. Is there anyone online wishing to speak in support of this application? In support of the application? Anyone online wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Opposition to the application? Committee, Ms. Archer, Mr. Strangway, seconding? All right, any further comments or questions? All those in favor, and that carries. Right. Smoking right along here. Dealing with certainly the last one, but not the least, of course. We are now dealing with file number D20-2021-074, and this is 358 Drum Road, Geographic Township of Members, Ward 8. Mr. Staten, go ahead, sir. Yeah, it's working. So the uh, purpose and effect of this application is to request relief from section 5.1 subsection C of the Oak Ridges Marine Zoning Bylaw to increase the maximum allowable height for accessory buildings or structures in a residential zone or to a residential use from five meters to 6.4 meters in order to construct a new 83.6 square meter or approximately 900 square foot detached garage. It's important to note the garage is not proposed for human habitation. The subject property is situated in a rural area west of Pontypool and west of Highway 35. The parcel is surrounded by agricultural land under production with infrequent rural residences along Drum Road. The property itself sits atop rolling hills forming part of the Oak Ridges Moraine. The subject property was created through consent in 1991 and contains a partially completed bungalow which began construction in August of 2021. The dwelling is approximately 159.2 square meters or around 1700 square feet in size. Shown here is a site plan of the property featuring uh, the detached garage uh, located in the southwest corner of the property. So as you can see here, the proposed garage, we have a, a drilled well, uh, as well as the existing bungalow that's currently under construction and the proposed um, or the installed septic system. Uh, the um, the, the proposed elevations uh, for the garage are shown here and um, a conceptual version of the garage was modified in order to add uh, additional exterior treatments such as the stone, the stone skirting that you can see uh, at the base. Uh, it didn't really show up that great, but there is stone skirting along the base of the, uh, of the structure, uh, as well as uh, additional windows on the east and west uh, wall faces. The result is a, is a building that essentially blends in with the existing dwelling. 
So the bungalow currently under construction is shown um, in, the, in the slide on the left, um, as you can see from, from Drum Road. Uh, you can see a section of the vegetated buffer. Um, I know it's uh, fall, so there aren't as many leaves right now. Uh, a subsequent slide will give you an appreciation for just how, uh, just how thick or dense that, that buffer is. The proposed location of the garage is to the um, is to the right or the west of the dwelling, with the approximate location shown uh, looking southward in the slide on the right. So again, here, back in here is where the garage will be located. The entrance to the uh, subject lands, uh, showing the rural nature of the uh, adjacent stretches of Drum Road, looking east in the slide on the left and west on the slide on the right. Again, you get a, a greater appreciation for the trees lining Drum Road when in these slides, um, which would offer screening for the garage when viewed from Drum Road. So one of the intentions of the general provisions of the zoning bylaw is to restrict the height of accessory buildings to ensure the use is subordinate to the primary use. The requested 1.4 meter relief from the zoning bylaw would be negligible when viewing the building from Drum Road. Given the design treatments proposed for the garage and the surrounding vegetation, the garage will complement rather than dominate the presence of the bungalow. The slide on the left uh, shows the closest resident, which is actually situated across the road at uh, 349 Drum Road, while the slide on the right depicts the uh, hedgerow running north-south along the eastern property boundary which provides privacy and conceals the location of the garage when you're traveling uh, westbound from uh, a long drum road. The proposed location and height of the garage at 6.4 meters will not present any massing impacts on the adjacent agricultural properties. Uh, as a former employee of an automobile manufacturer, the applicant requires a hoist for storing and working on automobiles. As mentioned, there is no second story or storage loft proposed within the garage. The garage will provide enclosed storage for the automobiles that would otherwise be stored outside and vulnerable to the elements. The location of the garage uh, facing south is shown in the slide on the left, as well as a view of the proposed location uh, from the east facing westward uh, in the slide on the right. Note the property, again, as, as mentioned, is surrounded completely by lands that are, that are under agricultural production. The property is of sufficient size to accommodate the detached garage within the space to the southwest of the dwelling and is not anticipated to adversely impact the use of the rear yard. No massing or height incompatibilities with the primary residential use and surrounding properties are anticipated. The proposal also maintains the requisite six meter setback from the interior side and rear lot lines for a building in excess of 4.3 meters as is defined in the zoning bylaw. The slide on the left is taken facing southward illustrating the agricultural lands under production to the south as well you can see the hedgerow on the on the eastern lot line that that continues southwards um, and on the slide on the right it is taken facing northward towards the proposed location of the garage uh, as, as seen in, again in the slide on the right. Comments were received from engineering and corporate assets division stating that they have no objections to the proposal. The supervisor of party sewage systems of the building and septic division advises that a sewage uh, system installation report has been completed for the property. The installation report is consistent with the site plan provided for the minor variance proposal, which indicates a 43.5 meter clearance distance between the garage and the leaching bed. The proposal for the accessory structure will not incorporate habitable space or plumbing fixtures, and as such will not affect the capacity of the sewage system components. As such, there are no concerns with the minor variance proposal as it relates to private on-site sewage disposal. Since the writing of the report, comments were received from the chief building official of the building and septic division stating that a building permit is required for the construction of the detached garage. Based on the contents of the report, staff acknowledges the application meets all four tests of a minor variance. Staff respectfully recommends approval of the application subject to the conditions identified within the report. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions of the planner? All right. 
Is the applicant online? Does the applicant wish to speak to the application? I see someone there. Do you wish to speak, uh, Mr. DeBoer? Good afternoon, committee. Uh, I do wish to speak, and I'll keep it very brief. Uh, Kent and I have had some conversations about this uh, particular um, garage. Um, it is more so site-specific for the individual that's uh, wishing to participate in storing his car collection and also in, in turn uh, working on them in the same time. And as you can respect, the, the typical residential garage does not permit the hoist height requirements. And as Kent alluded to, we're not proposing any second story or any storage or anything. The additional height requirement is specifically to allow him to have a portable hoist within the garage structure to allow him the freedom to work within his own property limits. Um, so other than that, if there's any additional questions, we'd be more than happy to help. Thank you. And thank you for that. Are there any questions of the uh, consultant? All right, being none. Is there anyone online wishing to speak in support of this application, in support of the application? Anyone online wishing to speak in opposition to this application? Opposition to the application. Committee. Mr. Strangway, Ms. Robinson. Any further comments or questions with respect to the motion on the floor? All in favor. Your application is approved, sir. Thank you very much. All right. All right. I think that's the last application. And now moving right along, we're about to experience a grand phenomena within these esteemed chambers. We're going to promote Mr. Lahi. All right. Has everyone read the uh, memorandum? All right. I need a, a motion then, God willing, for, if you wish. To, all right. So, Mr. Marsh, uh, you're making that motion to. Uh, what are we doing? Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lahi uh, to uh, actual Secretary Treasurer for the Committee of Adjustment. And I saw Ms. Richardson, you're seconding that. Any comments or questions? Please, no negative. All right. All those in favor? And may I say congratulations, sir. All right, now, and in her absence, um, we will uh, make a motion to uh, appoint Sherry L. Ray as the acting secretary treasurer for the Committee of Adjustment. Do I have a motion for that? Ms. Richardson, Mr. Strangway, any further comments or questions? She's not here, so be kind. All those in favor? And that carries. All right. Thank you very much for that. And the next one is you have a draft in front of you for the uh, minutes of our meetings for 2022. And I would like a motion, uh, if for no other reason, just to confirm those dates. So, Mr. Strangway, Ms. Robinson. Uh, yes, go ahead. Are you making that motion, though? Yes, I'll make the motion. All right, and a second, I miss Robinson. Go ahead, Mr. Trangway. Yeah, I'm just wondering about the uh, November 3rd date. I noticed this year on the uh, early November date, we only had three applications. I'm wondering if in the past that uh, the need for two meetings in November is there, whether we should leave it there, just whether staff has any thoughts on that. Probably has to do with legislation, but uh, I'll ask Ms. Berry to speak to that. Sure, thanks, Mr. Chair. And through you, Member Shangway, um, the first of our two November meetings this year um, were sort of a perfect storm of events that took place to reduce the number of files that we brought forward. It was a full agenda, uh, and much like today's, um, however, uh, leading up to the meeting, um, a number of, uh, as I say, factors came together and applicants uh, decided to withdraw uh, their applications um, from the point in time where they were in the process, so to be brought forward at a later date. Um, so we do anticipate uh, that we will proceed at the pace uh, that we have been going. Um, we have already, uh, in fact, got full agendas, you'll perhaps be happy to hear, uh, for the first quarter uh, of 2022. Um, little late in March, but we're getting there. Uh, but certainly, we're looking at full agendas for January and February. So there's my preamble. 
taking us to what we anticipate for next November. Um, I understand in speaking with our colleagues and, and the planners in the department that historically uh, the doubling up, the double header as it has become to known uh, in November is to give the committee a bit of a break uh, in December actually. Um, to give the committee members. Our staff will just keep going right through. However, we recognize that maybe the members uh, appreciate having a break in December. Um, all joking aside, it is also an opportunity to um, complete some administrative matters uh, that our planners do to support the work uh, for the Committee of Adjustment um, that gets uh, wrapped up at the end of the year. We certainly are still able to and looking at options uh, towards the fourth quarter of 2022 and whether there's merit in adjusting the two November meetings. We do have to remain mindful of how late uh, in December, for example, if we were to have a very early December meeting, how um, late we could do that and still provide for uh, the appeal period to take place prior to the holiday shutdown, the municipal shutdown, um, of course, giving um, the community an opportunity to exercise their appeal rights should they choose to. So that uh, is, as we say, putting this forward in draft to give you some idea that we're sticking with the status quo, but that some internal conversations, and I welcome your feedback on this point, would be to potentially look at a very early uh, December meeting that might actually take place on a different day of the month um, if we were looking at a date that overlapped with another, for example, um, uh, conflict in, in our venue uh, where we hold these meetings. Well, as chair, I'll speak to that. I hold the Christmas month sacred, and I do. Christmas for me is a joyous, joyous time, so I am not even remotely interested in December meetings. And uh, I also, I chair another committee with the City of Quartha Lakes, and I've made the same comments, and we don't have December meetings. So that's where I am, but I'm willing to listen. Go ahead, Mr. No, I just wondered whether, it, because there were the two meetings, whether that was common practice or whether, as explained, it was uh, different this year. And I'm absolutely fine with the explanation. I'm absolutely fine with the two meetings in November. Thank you, Santa. Thank you. We had, I believe, one year, and I'm not sure how long ago it was. There was, a, I think, a meeting in December the 4th. Uh, I don't know. Someone said that had to do with a leap year or something. Uh, I don't know. I, but uh, do you, is uh, That I don't rec well, recall. I possible I wasn't even here yet, um, and I wouldn't want to make it up. Uh, however, if anybody on the line recalls the reason for that one, I, I welcome them to chime in. Um, I'll add that there was some discussion when looking at the calendar, um, recognizing that our staff do perform uh, multiple duties in the fact that they also uh, present planning applications to the Planning Advisory Committee um, and being cognizant of the timeframes uh, to meet the deadlines for the PAC uh, with report prepare uh, preparation and presentation um, that and looking at the um, very quick turnaround time when we have only two weeks in between meetings uh, when we look at the double header for November and the um, domino effect that that has on, uh, on on the work involved on a number of parties parts uh, so potentially looking at just adding a third week for example in between uh, the two November dates was an option as well I guess my only comment would be, I hope that November 3rd date doesn't fall within the first week of the deer hunting season, because <laughs> it did this time, but I think that had to do with the 1st of November fell on uh, a weekday or something like that. So anyway, um, yeah, no problem. Any further comments or questions with respect to the motion on the floor? All those in favor? And that you're an agreeable lot today. Very good. All right, under other business, are there any further comments uh, from staff? Any further comments from committee? Oh, Dave's getting his mask on. He's gonna rob a place or leave. I'm not sure which. All right, I just wanna say thank you very much to staff um, for their excellent efforts over the year. Um, sometimes uh, there's no doubt about it that with some of these uh, applications, things can become rather heated and uh, I suppose to some degree that's something of an understatement because we have had, and uh, staff always hang in there 
and do their very, very best to uh, address the concerns and, and put the best foot forward. So I have nothing but accolades for our staff and how they do things. And to you, Ms. Lewis, thank you very much for filling in. I know that's uh, a bit of a, uh, what shall I call it, erratic test up there or an arduous task, but uh, you, do, you did very well, thank you, and, uh, and as well to you, sir. And uh, Joel is usually up there, and uh, we give him a hard time as much as we can, but uh, anyway, thank you for that. And I guess uh, at last, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everyone, because we're not going to see you uh, before, I don't think, anyway. All right. Any, anything further? No? All right. There's no correspondence, so next meeting looks like it's January the 20th, 2022. A motion to adjourn. Ms. Richardson, Mr. Strangway, I don't think I've ever lost one of these, but let's try. All right. Everyone in favor? That's carried. Thank you very much. Mm.